Recession fears are rising with the collapse of the spread between the two-year and the 10-year bond yields. But there's another spread that's watched pretty closely by the Fed and The Economist, and that is telling a different story. Senior economics reporter Steve Leisman has more. Steve, which one is it? Well, Becky, every picture tells a story, don't it, as Rod Stewart sang all those years ago? Well, here's two pictures of the yield curve telling two very different stories. We're going to start with a much followed and talked about 210 spread. Looks to have a perfect record of predicting recessions every time it turns negative. Within a few months or years, the economy plunges into recession at just 19 basis points. It's not singing the recession tune just yet, but it is pretty close. But economists ask the question, what does the spread between a yield two years and 10 years from now say about the near-term outlook for our economy? Their answer is, it shouldn't really tell you very much. Rob, Roberto Perley and Benson Durham from Piper Sandler write, quote, careful statistical analyses have shown that it is actually the short end of the curve that has the best predicting power for recessions. And the short end, far from inverting, is actually steepening. 163 basis points separate the three-month and the two-year treasury. The near-term spread looks like it's actually in the middle of one of the great expansions of our time. Even if you buy the 210 spread recession or any recession signal, it is tough investing with it as a yardstick. Recessions following inversions, they happen anywhere from months to up to two years afterwards, and stocks usually rise in the interim. The two economists write, lending too much credence to the predictive power of the yield curve inversions inescapably leads into investors leaving money on the table. The market may be correctly predicting a rising risk the Fed will go too far and plunge the economy into recession. If so, economists think the best place to look for that is at the short end of the curve where investors have to make direct bets on those outcomes. And Becky, we are not there yet. All right, kind of a stupid question, but as you were saying this, I was thinking, okay, the predictive, the predictive ability of the two-year tenure, it always t leads to a recession months or years after that, if it's years after that, I would say that's not very predictive. I would say that stinks as a predicting um, tool. Yeah, it, 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 is, it is not great. And it's, a, and it's an even worse investing tool. Becky, the, the data that I've seen shows you can get it as quickly as six months or you can get it as, as, la as late as 23 months later. One of the really weird things that economists are writing a lot about is that the curve actually inverted before, in 2019, before COVID. It was COVID that caused the recession. So it's one of those things, people go back and say, how did the 210 or any inversion out there actually <laughs> predict COVID? It you know that didn't, COVID was coming? and it couldn't yeah. have.